this was kind of a cool chapter, I thought, because um, I'm belatedly realizing that I've used R6 a lot as, as kind of a consumer with, without, without knowing it. Uh, mm. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, what people thought of the chapter. I thought it was, I thought it was really helpful. Um, it was really helpful. I mean, at the very least, in kind of better understanding, uh, well, having a better passing understanding of how some of the tools that I use actually work. Um, for example, uh, I don't know if anyone uses Crosstalk, um, but it, it's, it definitely uses R6. Mm. And then there are a few, um, I think there are a few other examples. I, 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 I haven't looked into the source code yet, but I think work there's a, um, on our open side, there's um, an R, uh, an R client for uh, GraphQL um, APIs. Um, it looks from the kind of functional interface, like it's, it's, it's R6, but I haven't, I haven't popped the hood to see if in the source code it's using R6. And then I was looking back at the, the, the Colin Fay's book, um, the, the engineering grade shiny, shiny mm -hmm. apps, and, um, which I think was maybe your inspiration for it being, you know, the R6 stuff, Trevin. Um, uh, uh, I, I kind of, it was, it was almost like a, an interesting circular reference because uh, I remember when I was perusing that book uh, in the past, I, I remember uh, seeing, you know, R6 as an option for um, facilitating communication between modules, um, mm. between shiny modules. Uh, and I was hoping that they'd say a lot more, but then they just, uh, the, uh, Colin just kind of pointed to Hadley's book. <laughs> I guess it's not circular in the sense that Hadley's book doesn't point to Colin's book, at least to my knowledge. Yeah, I was I was actually looking at the Mastering Shiny for R6 references and then uh, forgot about the book by Colin Fay. But yeah, that's... Uh, that's a good call out. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's a good reference as well, yes. Uh, and reading this, that there's, I, it, um, I'm perusing the chapter today, kind of during lunch, uh, it looked like, uh, you know, that is the chapter you're showing right there, uh, Trevin, it, there's a reference to um, uh, this, this other package I wasn't aware of, I think it's called Tidy Modules, uh, which seems like it's kind of a layer of abstraction um, on top of kind of this R6 strategy, you're kind of using R6 for, uh, um, yep, that's the one right there, hmm. uh, for the kind of cross-module uh, communication. I didn't get past maybe the first screen or two of the getting started guide, but it looked promising. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I, I'll agree that this was an interesting chapter to read. Um, I thought it was pretty straightforward. Um, uh, Hadley wrote it in a way that was was nice to follow along with. Um, so to get started, uh, you might notice that this is a design of a hex sticker. Um, R6 is not base R, but actually a package. Um, and so I'll, I'll give a, an overview of R6 and uh, we'll learn about encap encapsulation. Uh, so this is, R6 is a package and it's actually developed by Winston Chang uh, out of R Studio. Um, so this, yeah, comes out of our studio, not our or the R core team. Um, why the naming convention? Uh, we went over S3. Uh, next week, we're going to go over S4. Uh, so people called it R5 and Jest, um, but R5 was a different system developed by uh, someone on the R core team that never got fully implemented. Uh, excuse my, uh, I have a sick dog over here. So if you hear coughing in the background, that's what that is. Um, so, so two special properties for 
uh, R6. It's encapsulated object-oriented programming. Um, and that's what's called like classic object-oriented programming. Um, and objects are mutable and modified in place. Uh, so reference semantics. So I'm, I'm going to go over uh, the first three sections after the um, after the introduction. Uh, the, the fifth section was um, kind of a, a why R6 and why not um, RC, which is the kind of the base R version or similar comparison. Uh, yeah, I, I'll let you just go over that in the book. Um, but yeah, since it is a package, we'll we'll have to install it. And um, there's actually only one like one function you need to know, and that's R six class. Um, here we're creating an R six class uh, for a bank account. Um, and here is the uh, class name, I believe it's called. Um, and you'll want to do upper upper camel case type for that. That's the uh, that's that's the preferred method of naming for R six classes, and then. Um, what R6 class is made up of is uh, methods or, or functions and fields, which is everything else. So here we're just basically creating a basic like checking account where you can uh, deposit amounts in and then by adding to your checking or withdrawing amounts and then taking away from the checking. Um, so I here I create um, an, a new instance of this R6 class, um, my own uh, bank account. And right now it's just uh, initiated at with, with zero amount. And then I get paid. And I want to deposit into my checking account. Then I can uh, use this uh, use this method to do that. So now I have a hundred. Uh, I decide to uh, go out to eat or something, and here I use the withdrawal method. Um, Interesting thing about this is that you can chain these methods together um, back to back or similar to uh, kind of the pipe and the arrow, uh, you can make it a little more readable with this, uh, this format as well. So after this, uh, you know, after depositing 100 and withdrawing a few times, um, my account should be 70. So when I print it out, it will give me my checking amount as well as uh, uh, list the functions as well. So that's kind of a kind of just a, a simple example of an R6 class. Um, uh, what I thought was kind of cool is that you can create a new R6 class and have it inherit um, one that's already created. So say, say I wanted to make a new bank account or new bank account type. Um, here I called it promotion bank account. So if maybe I referred someone 
they might get a you know a promotion or a special uh special bonus for signing up so here i made a new r6 class it inherits everything from bank account and then you can add to that as well um so here for the promotion bank account uh your checking is going to start out at 100 you get you get 100 dollars for signing up um and i also uh added this other method to uh display the balance a little different so here uh ryan's not here but i i created a promotion bank account for ryan and uh you can see that ryan didn't have to deposit anything uh he had a hundred dollars already in the account um let's see here uh so arthur was talking about some some other instances of packages that use r6 um i saw that the package waiter also uses r6 um so you can you can take a look at the the class the classes in there and uh it will print out the the rank the ranking of it um as well as you can you can list all the methods and fields within your r6 class um so there might be only a few or there might be a ton. I guess it just depends on what type of R6 class you have. Um, yeah, I know, so I know waiter was one. Um, I was looking at a couple of the previous, uh, previous um, advanced R videos and uh, it looks like Roxygen also uses R6 uh, as well. Um, Keras. Um, I think that it's maybe a, initially like a Python library and it's like converted into R. So this was a way to translate it for R to use R6 classes. And I I want to say I want to say uh, I was thinking about a couple more, but uh, they're not coming to mind right now. Um, maybe maybe all all of them wants to say something. Uh, does all of them? Do you have your hand up? I I didn't see. Yes, yes. I wanted to say something, but I've seen the answer already. It was about the cat function. I think I've seen it's about concatenating and printing. Oh, it's which function? At the top, I saw cat. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's a way you can uh, you can print out the uh, information. um i i think there's i think there's a slight difference between that and uh the print function but it's not coming to mind right now hey ryan quick uh sorry not ryan excuse me trevin a quick quick question um do you happen to know i don't recall from reading the chapter whether um uh you know if if, if you're kind of inspecting you know, I guess under this introspection heading, yeah. are you able to see private um, um, methods or, or or fields or or only the public ones uh, visible through through that? Just looking at names. Oh, um, 
Yeah, that that's a good question. Um, I want to say you should be able to uh, print those out. Um, let's see. Where any? Let's see. So they, the book does Hadley two. Uh, did does Hadley two have any? Um, Does that have any private methods? So I think I think his per, his uh, person R six class under privacy. I think he has some private uh, fields, age, age, and name. Um, oh, um, yeah. I'm just if you happen to happen to know, I, I can I can okay. definitely look it out and experiment with this this example. Um, I was I was just kind of curious about that. Yeah. I my first thought is that it would but as soon as you ask it like for that information then that's when it um prints out the null or or whatever like uh that's my naive understanding <laughs> but yeah good 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 question for sure um let's see oh um yeah so that's kind of how to see the guts of it um uh two important methods for r6 uh are initialize and print um i think i had yeah print up there uh, so it's a way of displaying your information, uh, uh, in a better to read format versus the default method. And then initialize is a good way to, um, provide like initial information for your, uh, class. If it, especially if it's not provided um and the book says that you can also do a check as well just to like for instance uh check that the name is uh one word or check that the age is equal to uh one number um and you can also like uh check type like character or numeric um so yeah those those are two important methods for for the r6 class um so yeah um kind of going to uh arthur's question a little sneak preview um you cannot also control access to um, some of the fields and methods um, within the R6 class um, by making them private versus public. Uh, so in this instance, uh, here we have a new uh, class. It's a it's similar, it's a it's a bank account, but it's more strict. Um, so, um, you still have your, your, um, deposits and withdrawals, uh, but it, those are, uh, those are private now. And in this case, if, if you happen to, um, withdraw, more than you have it will it will throw you this air and say um it must be smaller than your balance so i made an i made a new uh account for federica um here we have federica deposit uh 100 and then thank you <laughs> and then 
and then I I tried withdrawing two hundred from your account, and it threw this error. So, uh, so yeah, uh, you can uh, you can make edits like that, and and also make it so that the balance is is private instead of public. Um, yeah, the, the last part here, um, R6 uses, uh, reference semantics. So objects are copied or excuse me, not copied when modified. Um, there's definitely, uh, this, this is where Hadley says that this makes R6, um, a bit tricky and can be like, harder to reason through. Um, if, if you do want to copy, you can use uh, clone, but uh, Hadley gave an example in the book where um, you have this function and uh, two classes. Um, and here you can, uh, you can have a function return a value and modify their inputs, uh, but the the big downside is you don't want to do both for R six, and that's what that's what he was uh, warning against. Um, so there's definitely um, there's definitely some downsides to it, and I think we're going to get more into that into chapter 16 for some of the trade-offs between um, uh, the different object-oriented programming methods. Uh, so like R6 versus some of the others. Um, the also, I guess the interesting thing about the um, objects are copied or excuse me, objects are not copied when modified. Um, I think that's also one of the reasons why like Colin Fay, um, I guess promotes R6 as a way to uh, handle data within Shiny. Um, Cause like every time, if every time, uh, you modified like an object and it was copied in your shiny environment, then that's that's adding more um, data and, and more data to your RAM that you um, might not necessarily need. And so that can slow down your shiny app and like using R6 as a as a class is one way to deal with that and and kind of uh, lessen the amount of storage that you need. And also what Arthur said, you can also um, uh, share the data between modules. Uh, so if you do build a Shiny app, like a modular Shiny app, that's uh, a good way to kind of hand off data between modules. Um, and then uh, finalize, that method is complement to initialize um, similar to on.exit. So it can be used to uh, kind of clean up at the end and it can like de delete resources from the initializer. Um, yeah, I think the, I think the, only other thing I wanted to add, uh, before maybe opening up to discussion, um, the, 
the like bank account example that that's definitely something that is a good example of the R6 classes uh, since it's not uh, copied on modified uh, that's something where it, it can really shine um, like the amount changes but um, you, the, I guess the amount of data isn't exponentially like increasing with those changes. Uh, you might be able to implement it in like using other uh, object oriented methods, but I think this one makes sense. Uh, so that's that's kind of the uh, basic overview of R6. Um, I would like to hear like if anyone has um, like experience with R6 or or see it in other packages. But not not me. But I was curious to uh, I, I was curious about the uh, you know so R six is a package and you can install it and this is different from um, S four uh, so the other uh, S three and S four so why why do you think uh, they they put it R six within the two, the other two. So they 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 yeah. are um, a specification for for object of a certain class or a certain type. So even R six provide a class for object. Uh, did you figure it out why R six is between these two? Maybe I don't know. Just was. Um, thinking about that. Um, like why R6 is in a package versus uh, S3 and S4 are built in R? Exactly, yeah. Um, I did see a little bit of commentary on that and um, I think I think it's easier since it's in a package. It's easier to um, have a quicker turnaround in development time uh, versus S three and S four are dependent on like new versions of R itself coming out versus uh, R six. It's it's based on um like Winston Chang and and whoever else is helping develop that package um so i think that was one and then i think maybe the dependencies of other packages is also part of that equation um of of being dependent on R or a separate package. Uh, and I think being in a package had some advantages of, of that as well. I, I do kind of wonder, maybe I'll, I'll Google it right now, is whether R, um, uh, R6 is actively developed and maintained because it kind of seems like, I, I guess maybe to underscore your your point a little bit, Trevin, is, you know, with S, my impression is with S3 and S4, since they're part of base R, they're difficult to change. Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, I think as soon as they're part of the core, I think there's a, a great emphasis put on backwards, maintaining backwards compatibility, which might make it difficult for, um, for, for the product to kind of evolve, right? Um, and, and then maybe separately from that, 
you know, perhaps R6 is still, you know, even though it appears in Hadley's book, maybe it's, um, I mean, kind of like Arlang in a certain sense. Arlang has seen a lot of a lot of changes over the past few years, right? It, it, I think some of the major ideas are stable, but the implementation has changed typically for 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 the better. So I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if 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 it's for kind of practical reasons that R six is a is a package, and maybe also for philosophical reasons, because at least as a user, you know as kind of a naive user of packages that utilize R6, R6 kind of forces me to do something that's very, um, the, the syntax is not kind of like idiomatic R, right? Um, it, mm. it, it has a very different syntax, um, which then is an R, you know, forces me as an R user to, I guess it's sort of strange, like, I, it, it it can feel like I'm writing a different I'm writing non R within R if if I can put it if I can put it in those simplistic terms so it might be a like a philosophical problem where you know base R might want things to remain very have the interface remain very R like but perhaps R six requires the interface to be different just by virtue of how it is itself different. I don't know, just some random random thoughts, but I think that's a really good question, Federica. And I, I saw that you were posting some things about R7 and I was kind of wondering too, like I need to look more into R7, but it, it seems like it, it's not, I think it's meant to be more an evolution of S3 and S4 than, than a successor to R6. So I, 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 it, it's, exactly. it follows in the yeah. paradigm of S3 and 4, whereas R6 is very much a, a distinct paradigm within kind of object oriented um, paradigms of, 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 of base R. Yeah. Yeah, you can see there's um, like a mention on R6. I was reading this uh, why the name R6 and it said that it's supposed to, to be the subsequent to S3, S4, so named R5. And then, so they uh, name it at six, I don't know, something like that. So that, that was, I was just um, asking myself why was the, the chapter positioned between. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe because it's um, like a sequence of uh, important uh, information that uh, it connects to the two. Uh, I, oh, yeah, I think, I think at least for R6, it can be built upon S3. So I think that's, might be a reason why it comes after the S3 chapter. Um, is you can have like an S3 within R6, if I, if I understood that correctly. I don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question, Federico. I, I mean, it, it's sort of uh, why. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand why the, the chapter is there, right? It, it's it's another object oriented programming paradigm with an R, but why does it come after S three instead of? I I don't know. Kind of proximity somehow makes you wonder if there's some if there's some similarity between the two that. that I'm not, I'm simply not seeing. For me, it, it, it strikes me like it has a very different feel to me personally than, than, than S3. And I would, I would think like S3 and S4 are much more like one another than they are like R6. Uh, that being said, I haven't read the S3 chapter yet. Yeah, I think that um, they, they are, they are, uh, they define a class of objects and they, so in fact, when you have a function, for example, and you in your you search for information about the function, and you find sometimes mentioned that this is object of class S3 or object of class S4. And you don't find those things for R6. Uh, this is because it's not implemented inside R, so you need to load the package. But um, 
I think uh, uh, it's a sort of like uh, an expansion of the two, maybe. And now also there's a, a, a new one, uh, which is R7. And I think it's going to be uh, like implemented as well or something like that. So I, I wondered what, whether in the next uh, edition, this R7, here we go, yeah, maybe. But because we miss our, uh, our five, so where is it? Yeah, that'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see where, like, I'm guessing for whatever next edition that S3 and S4 will probably still be in there and S or R7 will just be an addition but I don't know. Um, I do like that. I do like that um, in the book, I believe that they were like, one of the ways they were warning so much against uh, R6 was just because of how different it is versus regular R programming. Uh, like throw back to what Arthur was saying. Um, since it's not, it's unlike R, that's why, <laughs> I think that's why they, partly why they like warn against using it just because it's so different. Does it, does anyone have a sense of kind of which is the most widely used kind of OOP paradigm with an R. I mean, that, that kind of feels like maybe a, a tidy Tuesday kind of a data data challenge where I guess you scrape the description files of, you know, maybe the most popular CRAM packages just to look at their uh, dependencies. Um, but um, I'm, I'm just kind of curious. I, I, I know that I've stumbled on R6 in a lot of cases, you know, um, Trevin mentioned waiter. Um, I think a lot of John Cohen's stuff uses R6, uh, of which waiter. Crosstalk uses R6, and I've seen like this this GraphQL um, uh, uh, client uh, package uh, uses R6, but I'm not sure which is the most kind of like prevalent paradigm um, in 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 our world. Um, I mean, certainly there's like strong usage of of S3 for a lot of the date time stuff, but I, I don't I don't know if things are changing. Well, uh, anyway, Trevin, thank you for, for this presentation. And uh, I want to ask if you did uh, manage to push your notes to the main repo. I'll, I'll do that after that, after the meeting. Yeah. That would be very interesting. And um, how did you find that object that you just created, like the bank account? Um, the that was uh, from the that was from the uh, the answers or the the questions in the book. Um, like the exercises and then there are um there's like a solutions manual as well for for those exercises yeah and then so that that that's an object a new a new object that you can deal with and uh, how that is different from I don't know, setting up, uh, what what does it differently from something else in R that you can build up to do the same thing? If there's, yeah, I'm sure there's a way to, to do the same. Uh, um, I think when, I think one of the main differences is that R doesn't, 
copy whenever you modify the the object. Um, so whenever I, or whenever you do a withdrawal or deposit, it will modify the object, but it won't. Uh, I won't copy it. Um, I forget if S3 had like private classes or not, but I think that was possibly another difference. Um, so I, I think one of the other exercises was like, here's an R, like create an R6 class that contains like a password or something and you have to you have to use a password in order to get the information and i i feel like that might be unique to r6 but i'm i'm not certain if that is but that would be that would be kind of along the same lines of that um what was it um controlling access um so you can control like what the user sees whether it's like the bank account uh total amount or um you can even require like a password to view that information um Let's see, I think. Yeah, so the so the second question on um in the controlling access um section, it asks to uh, create a class with a write only password field. Um and it should have a check password method uh, that returns true or false. Uh, but there should be no way to view the complete password. Um, so then there, there's a solutions manual as well where you can see like how that gets implemented. Uh, let me see if I can paste that in the chat. Uh, I also found uh, uh, another uh interesting uh like things as it says what is it no i don't find. okay so uh it says that um, r6 is very similar to rc which is referring classes and the reason is that r6 uses R S three as you said and then RC, so reference classes uses S4. So that's why. So you have S3. Well, anyway, and then uh, so it's not S4 doesn't doesn't get um, so it's not uh, part of R6. So the R6 boxes do not contain S4 objects, basically, but mm. just S3. Does that sound uh, right? Yeah. It says R6 is much faster than uh, reference classes, and then it says uh, uh, they are very similar, but you might require additional effort to learn R6. So hmm. S for object are the next uh, chapter. And uh, we don't have a, a volunteer for the next chapter. This is... I, th I think that one's the least popular one. I think S3 is the most and then R6 and then S4. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'll, I'll have a look at the chapter and see if I could take it on. I'm doing another book club presentation next week. So, or no, wait, sorry, I am not. So uh, yeah, let me, let me take on S, S4. I'll sign up for it. Okay, you. great. Yeah. I feel like it'd be kind of fun to have a bonus, uh, a bonus chapter on R7, uh, although at this stage probably <laughs> it's better for everyone just to watch Hadley's, uh, Hadley's talk at uh, our Studio Conf 2022 or I think he did a similar talk at um, USAR 2022. I haven't watched the, the, the USAR talk. Well, I was going to say that maybe you can add it to your presentation, but it might make sense for the uh, trade-offs chapter. That's that's a good one, yeah. But I, I don't want to volunteer Federica <laughs> for that. Cool. Any other um, any other R six thoughts or object oriented thoughts? I mean, it kind of. I do wonder. If, has, does anyone know Python? Um, I, I I don't, and and I wonder if. If for those people who know Python R6 feels familiar, um, I, I, I know for me kind of, um, I, I guess I dabbled a little bit in C sharp. And so this, some pieces bear kind of a passing resemblance to C sharp, like the method, the method chaining in particular uh, looked, looked, looked familiar. Um, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it is as Hadley kind of, Set in the chapter, maybe a bit more like a, a familiar tooling for people that are coming from other languages that have object oriented programming. Yeah, def I definitely, uh, definitely feels more Pythonic. And I think, I think with the chaining, he also said like similar to Java, apparently. So yeah, maybe maybe if I learn Python more, it will help. <laughs> After the last R Studio Comp, I think probably all of us will. <laughs> <laughs> as as soon as Shiny for Python becomes more uh, mainstream, they yeah. release the next version. <laughs> Yes, oh. I am just thinking, I just want to ask a question based on the R6, because as you are presenting, I'm thinking, is it possible, is there a way in which we can search through CRAM for all packages, in you know, that there are all packages that depend on R6? Mm. Yeah, um, I was, I was just thinking of that and um, thinking if I, if I could do that, I could like maybe post the results um, to the channel. Um, Cause I looked at, um, I looked at like cohort four's video for advanced star and uh, Steven who presented showed like the top 10 packages that utilize R6. Um, so that's how I heard like Keras was one of them, uh, Roxygen, and like a few others that you might be familiar with. Um, so I might go take a look at that video again. And then, um, yeah, the, you can definitely do it. I, I'm just not, not sure off the top of my head. And I, I think uh, like along those lines, there are like advanced search skills you can use for GitHub um, 
beyond like my basic GitHub searching skills that you can probably search our code on GitHub and see like where it gets utilized. So the, yeah, those are my two like two thoughts on how to see like utilization and uh, I know the crayon one for sure is uh, doable. Yeah, like like with all things, I think the hardest part would coming would be coming up with the definition of like most used uh, packages. You know, is it mm -hmm. do you have like a page rank alg algorithm? You know, it's like uh, the package that has the most the most um, down. You know, upon which other packages the mo the most of, you know most frequently depend or it's most often downloaded oh. from Crayon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, once, once you have that list, then I guess so now you, uh, I forget what this is available in CRAN. Um, I guess you'd have, oh, cool. This, this is from, this is like Hadley's shiny app. Um, I think you can, yeah, I think you can like do multiple. So I'm, yeah, I think this one's R6 down here. So maybe not quite as popular as some of the like powerhouses of like the tidyverse and and whatever, but looks like it's still uh, being utilized quite a bit. But yeah, I'll I'll use that as my homework for for this week and see what I can come up with. Can you put the um, the link for the app? The oh, channel? yeah, yeah. Let me post that. Yeah, such a handy, uh, shiny tool. Cool. Well, uh, I guess if no one has anything else uh, and we have a volunteer for next week, uh, we can uh, let off early. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Trevor. It was a great presentation also. Uh, uh, I, I guess I'm kind of reminded that, 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 that it's nice to reserve some time for, for discussion. Um, so I think I'll... I'll endeavor in the future to be brief instead of going to the top of our both presentation so we can actually talk about stuff because it was just it was fun. Yeah, going like looking at a couple of cohorts, some of them like went long in the presentation, some of them was just like a half an hour with discussion. So it's kind of interesting to see like the different uh different ways to do it. Yeah, something. Thank you. About. Yeah, thank you. I'll uh, I'll see everyone next week. See you next week. Bye -bye. See you next week. Bye.